Before diving into building rich search experiences with our front-end libraries, let's take a first step by analyzing what is sent back by the API for each search query. We'll then see how it can be used in the most basic way with the JS API client before leveraging our front-end libraries in the following videos. Here is what an Algolia JSON API response looks like for a search query. For this video, we will be using a demo index containing movie records. The attributes can be broken down into four parts, hits, pagination, stats, and query. So we have an array of hits, how many hits were returned, the current page, how many pages in total, how many hits per page, the processing time it took for the engine to retrieve the hits, if the number of hits is exhaustive or not, the query, and the parameters of the query. The most important field in the search response is hits, an array of objects matching the currently active search state. Each hit contains the object's retrievable attributes, those attributes that have been configured to be returned in search responses. For our example, this is what we would get. If highlighting or snippeting has been enabled, the highlighted or snippeted values of title, for example, will be available as underscore highlight result dot title dot value and underscore snippet result dot title dot value respectively. These values can then be used instead of their original values to support highlighting and snippeting in a results interface. The value of the matching part will be wrapped up in tags by default the em tag. We then only need to style the tag with CSS to get a nice highlighting effect on all our queries. Since a single response cannot return all hits, the hits are paginated, with the current pagination state reflected by a few response fields. Number of hits, which is the total number of hits matching the search state. Number of pages, the total number of pages in the search response. Hits per page, which is configurable, indicates how many hits are presented per page and page, which is the current zero-indexed page of response. In a search interface, these fields can be used to render appropriate pagination controls. Stats information. The processing time. This is the time the engine took to process the query and retrieve the matching result set. This is uh, expressed in milliseconds. And the number of hits. This is the total number of hits matching the search date. Query information the query itself. This is the actual text query that was processed by the engine to retrieve the current hits. Query params. In addition to the text query itself, what filters or facets were being used to generate the given result set. Let's play with this API response and build the simplest possible front-end search experience. We first need to import the Algolia search library into our HTML page. Then, in the body tag, we will add an empty div tag with the ID of app that we will use to inject the results. Then, in a script tag, we will initialize our client and we'll initialize an index too. Here is the most basic way you could display content to a web page, simply using the JS client. Calling the search method on the index with an empty query and then iterating over the hits displaying only the title and injecting that in the app div. We are now equipped with the core knowledge of the Algolia API response. We've seen how to leverage it for the most basic hit rendering possible. In the next video, we will analyze the most important search patterns and how our front-end libraries use those API response to facilitate building rich search experiences.